Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Now, where were we? I don't even know anymore. We, the we opening were at, match, Sika. We no. were at the beginning. And we're going to talk about Gorilla trying to call Andre. Uh, Gorilla wants to uh, call Andre the Giant, but the brain has changed all of Andre's phone numbers. Oh, yeah? yeah. That's probably like $300 back then. It's probably also one phone number. Yeah. Actually, yeah, Andre probably had houses all over the well, country. Well, yeah, he probably had one in France. That's fair. Outback Jack versus Barry O. Mm. All those all those videos we saw of Outback Jack taking years to get here. Yeah. And, and then he finally gets here, and he's just a guy who had a shitty match. And he got to the airport like three weeks ago. Yeah. Well, he walked so he, from the airport, so. Yeah. And he had a first day of wrestling school match. He did headlocks and hip tosses and body slams. And Gorilla Monsoon spends minutes on end reading the Madison Square Garden disclaimer. Yeah. About not replaying or rebroadcasting any description of these events, et cetera, et cetera. And he finishes after a very long spiel. And then says, Brain, that means you can't sell a replay of this show. To which Bobby Heenan replies, Oh, you mean I can't record a match with Outback Jack and try to sell it? <laughs> no, it was even better. Outhouse. He goes, outhouse. Yes, Outhouse Jack. Oh, I see. Gorilla was aghast. Jack wins with the boomerang, which is a clothesline to the face, and then when the guy gets up, you clothesline him in the back of the head. Oh, wow. Which is actually kind of a cool combo. Yeah. No, it's stupid. <laughs> gorilla, gorilla screwed it up. He goes, that, uh, that uh, pair of boomerangs. It's like, no, no, Gorilla. See, he hits him, and then he comes back and hits him again. That's one boomerang. <sighs> Dumb. Must this be debated? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, he's right. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Heenan is confident any of his men could beat Outback Jack. He's probably right. Gorilla Monsoon tells us Coco Beware is very excited to be a part of Mania 3. I'm sure they all are. <laughs> and then throws it to Coco Beware versus Sika. I said out loud, oh no! But fortunately... It was okay. It was much, much, much better did, than last week. Did you yes. guys notice Sika responding to the fans with finger guns? I did not see that. He was actually. like, he was like doing this, and then like, he, like he had a rifle. That, yeah, he was going to shoot them. Yeah, all of them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I think before this match started, I wasn't the microphone still hanging in the ring. Yes. Yes. And so <laughs> this is the better than anything Sika did last week. <laughs> he was just killing time while they were trying to raise the uh, microphone up. Yeah. And he just walks out to it. The mic's hanging down from the ceiling of Madison Square, Madison Square Garden. He doesn't grab them. His hands are down on his sides. He stares at them in confusion and just goes. <laughs> well, I will say that they they just he just beat up Coco for a long time. Yeah. And then finally at the end, Coco hits one drop kick and rolls him up and pins him, and the place went nuts yep. for this finish. It was actually very very well done. Sika has somewhat redeemed himself for last week's worst match of the 80s. Somewhat. I I enjoyed this. It was it was fine enough. You know, Sika puts in as much effort as he did after the bell as he does before the bell, he'd be great. That guy was flying all over the place as soon as the bell rang and kicking Coco, Coco Beware out of the ring, stomping on him. He did beat it to hell at Coco after the bell rang. Yes. Yeah. So we go back to the studio. And Bobby Hina says, do you know how to get a hold of Coco Beware? And I think Gorilla thought the same thing I was thinking, which is like, he's trying to set up a terrible racist joke here. And Gorilla's very cautious and uh, anxious. And it turns out Bobby just wants to get a hold of him because Coco owes him $15 for dry cleaning because his bird soiled Bobby's jacket. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Gorilla howled. He did howl. Howled. Howled. Probably out of relief. Yeah. He thought Bobby was going to say something terrible. Me and Gene interviews Ricky Steamboat, who tells us that Randy Savage put him out of wrestling for seven weeks and three days. Yeah. It's a very specific amount of time. When you think about that, it, it's not that long. Not you even know? two months. Your, your larynx was crushed. You almost died. You couldn't breathe. They thought you were never going to wrestle again, much less talk. Then seven weeks and three days later, you're back at 100%. I'm thinking they may have uh, over-exaggerated his injury. Hmm. Yes, perhaps. He says he has had rematches against Randy Savage, but he always loses his cool and gets disqualified. He wants to make him suffer. This must be out shows he's acknowledging. Sure, sure. I wants to make him wants to make him suffer, but he knows his chances of this title are running out, and WrestleMania three is a big, big day. Yeah, that's nice of Ricky to acknowledge the house shows because nobody else did. No. Yeah. WrestleMania three report. A recap of the Hogan Andre contract signing. Jimmy Hart then greets Aretha Franklin, asks her to sing backup on their new song titled That's Alright, Honky Tonk Mama. 
And then Aretha like breaks to hear down, that song. Aretha breaks down the fourth wall, looks at the camera, <laughs> and just frowns and rolls her eyes. She did not accept this offer. Well, quite frankly, on a live sports broadcast, there is no fourth wall. She should be looking. That's at fair. So they discuss Mary Hart, Alice Cooper, Bob Uecker. Bob discusses his predictions. They're always wrong. Makes a joke about smoking in the bear. I did not understand. Did he mention Mr. Belvedere's balls? I'd have to go back and check. That he sat on. I didn't write it down. Yeah. Ridiculous. (laughs) Maybe he did that on his week off. Yeah. Who are those? They said he sat down and he went, ah! (laughs) That's what they said happened. (laughs) Seems accurate. Yeah, he was rushed out. (laughs) Yeah. He was wearing those, sweatpants. Remember that? Remember those things you used to ride when you were a kid? Those hoppity hops. Yes. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's there was a whole up. South Park episode about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> they run down the entire card, and then Gorilla Monsoon says, "I can't believe this lineup." Among other things, the final appearance of Roddy Piper. It will be a hair match officially now. Adrian Adonis is Jimmy Hart carrying barber tools around, and Bobby says, "If Roddy Piper walks around Detroit in a mini skirt and a bald head, he's going to get arrested." <laughs> So then we get a recap of Adrian accidentally cutting Brutus Beefcake's hair. <laughs> Gorilla says... Ridiculous. <laughs> Even Gorilla's like, what the fuck? How do you cut the wrong guy's hair? So he goes, honest mistake. And Gorilla says, Brutai is bent out of shape. So we get a Beefcake promo. Now- this was the funniest, <laughs> most horrendous promo. I, I just... I, you know what I thought when I watched this, Vinny? I thought of you. I watched this video and I just had a vision of you howling at this promo. Hmm. A fucking Brutus Beefcake talking about his hair getting cut and how uh, mad he is. Honestly, I barely paid attention to his, the promo itself because when they cut his hair, they cut off like this much. Yeah. And it wasn't <laughs> satisfied. No. So, so they sat him down before this and they didn't shave it, but they trimmed a reverse mohawk down the middle yeah. of his head. Yeah, he looked like animal. Hawk. Hawk. It was a hawk? Yeah. 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 So, yes, and he's ranting and raving. He hopes Piper shaves it on Donna's bald. I just love the idea that he got his head cut in such a, his, his hair cut in such a horrible fashion by some heel, but he just left it like that. Yeah, he didn't shave his head. Yeah, he didn't fix it or, <laughs> no. you know, get it buzzed or anything like that. No, and it's been a he, week. Yeah, he walked around for at least a week like that. Yes. Because it was taped, so it could have been months. Yeah, yeah. It could have been months ago. So Bobby Heenan is mocking Buddhist now for having a terrible haircut, and he does have a terrible haircut. Now he has to press Gorilla for the weaknesses he spotted in Andre's game. And Gorilla first complains about the food at Andre's camp. He says there were lots of ego trips for, he, for he, the, you had out there, Bobby Heenan. 200 or 300 things you had lying around. I grabbed one for myself. Now Bobby is outraged. What are you talking about? We go to commercial. We come back. Heenan's on the phone trying to find out what's missing. And Gorilla reveals it is a toy weasel in a red jacket. As far as the heard, stuff weasel go, this thing looked, looked pretty good. Like you could tell it was a weasel. I heard they Fair. found the same thing at Puffy's house. Oh, oh my god! Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.